business growth. The joy and the enthusiasm for growing your business is really truly a lifestyle. Whether you own your own company, whether you lead a team, whether you work for a large corporation, it is a lifestyle. There is no separation between who you're being and who's showing up to do business every single day. So you might just as well get into this reality that your business is an extension of you. Here's the deal. I work with companies all over the world and I have been for 20 years. I've done projects with companies helping them grow and scale and become more efficient in 16 countries so far and expanding. And there are some real fundamental steps that need to go into place in order for your business to grow. Now your business could be your, the principal of the company. You are the CEO, you're in the leadership realm, and you're responsible for scaling the business and making sure that everyone that's working with you is performing and being taken care of as part of your team. You may be someone that's running a team for a large corporation, a multinational an international company, and you have numbers to meet, you have people to make sure they're on their game and they're performing and they're happy. You may have a lot of responsibility on your plate and sometimes it can just really feel overwhelming. So the first thing you can do to shift out of that energy is to change how you talk about your business. So instead of things saying things like, I have to go to work, or I have to go meet with this client, or I have to get this done. A simple shift in the language patterns that you use can change the entire energy of what your commitments hold. And we all know this to be true in other areas of our lives. If you tell someone what to do, or if you ask someone to do something with you, it becomes a completely different experience as it is with your perception of what it is that you're doing with your time, your talents, and your expertise within your business, within your company, and the level of connection that you have to that on an emotional level. If you're that person that is basically just going through the motions to collect a check, I want to encourage you to get out of that business, get out of that role, get out of that company, find something that really taps into your gifts, your talents, your passion for, for life and what you would like to contribute and create in the world and put the energy into developing that. You see, what I would like to see you do to, in order to have the greatest level of fulfillment and the greatest joy of going through the act of doing business is to actually fall in love with your business. You see, this is something that I learned on a personal level that I always help my clients get perspective on when they feel like they're struggling. And that is to fall in love with your business in such a way that it's like, how would you treat a best friend? How would you treat a lover? Are you treating your business the way you would treat a best friend or a lover? Or is it something that you feel this sense of burden or responsibility that you have to go do and if you don't go do it then you know something bad is going to happen that is the absolute negative place to come from when five days a week or however much you work you got to get out of bed and go do the thing that you said you would do doesn't it make more sense to you to actually create something that the moment your eyes open, you're like, wow, I get to go and 
do this today. I get to meet with these clients. I get to make these phone calls. If you're in business development, I get to do some research and, and find new potential clients that are a fit to our value proposition. And I get to help these people and help these companies with our product, with our service, with who I'm being, with my personality, with my, my zest for life. And I'm telling you that this tweak in terms of how you approach your business and how you approach your life can turn the entire thing around if it's not going the way that you would like it to go. It's just simply a shift in your vibration, in your energy, in your focus, absolutely in your attitude. I will always remember my grade five teacher, Mrs. Smith, and she said to us one day, your attitude determines your altitude in life. And the other thing she told us was, shoot for the stars and you'll at the very least hit the moon. And I, th I thought about that, you know, all the way home from school that day and, and practically every single day up until this point in my life, it's so powerful that you actually have control over how your day goes, by how you run your energy. And it works like this. So it's vibration is thought, and then thought is vibration. So it's this back and forth thing that works harmoniously, that inspires ideas, and it inspires, it inspires thought patterns, and it inspires how you interact with people and have relationships. It determines the action that you take or that you don't take throughout the day. And it certainly determines how you connect to your end goal. Look, we all have numbers to meet, right? And we're in business to make money. Some people say, oh, I'm in business to help other people. And that's great, me too. But if you're not making money, then you could go do something else and you can still help people. So it really is about what are you creating? And the thing about that is most people don't really think that through. I talk to business owners every day, all day long. I speak at conferences, I go to networking events, I'm on the phone, we have people calling us all the time wanting to know about our next program. And most people, most business owners are what I call flying by the seat of their pants. That's their business model. They're kind of making it up as they go and they're, they're white knuckling it a lot, which is extremely stressful. And they're hoping that things will will click. Well, I'm here to tell you that hope is not a strategy. So here's some things that really need to be considered on a consistent basis. And before I give you these bullets, I would like to say this, we are hardwired to consistently seek more and more. It is a prime directive of our unconscious mind. So it's the part of us, hence the word unconscious, that we're probably not very aware of. And so we're constantly wired to seek more. What that means is we're never really truly satisfied. And this is something that's, again, hardwired into our unconscious and if you, if you look at children, this is a great way to understand this concept. Look at, look at a child that on a, say, significant day of the year, birthday, or if you celebrate Christmas, they just pile through the, the gifts, don't they? they? They tear them open and they're like, woo, this is amazing. And then they put it down and then they're on to the next one. And then when they start playing with them after the fact, it's the same thing. They go from 
toy to toy to toy, from activity to activity to activity. And it's because they satiate quickly at whatever level of awareness and understanding of the use of that toy happens to be in the moment. And then they move on to the next level of stimulation. And this is a wonderful understanding to have about yourself. Now the problem is, as we become adults, we're basically told that there's something wrong with that. And we even teach it to our children. You know, you should, you should be grateful. Like, how come you're not paying enough attention to this thing I bought you? You should be more grateful. You should be more appreciative. You know, your parents work hard. And it essentially dials the child's ability to embrace more back. So as an adult, if you have that programming, then that is exactly what you're doing with yourself in terms of reaching higher. So you want to constantly be allowing yourself to reach for more. We are hardwired to consistently and continually seek more and more. And when you don't allow yourself to reach higher and to reach for more, then you're actually keeping yourself from your greatness. This is probably the number one hurdle that I see with business owners today. Even if they're running a team, they hold themselves back, they curtail their imagination, they block themselves from going bigger and brighter and beyond. And then that affects other areas of their lives. So you can check back into some of my other videos. I talk a lot about energy, how it affects your health, how it affects your money, how it affects your relationships. And that's essentially what I'm talking about. So in this place of consistently seeking more and more, what I'd like to invite you to do is fall in love with your business. This notion of balance is erroneous. It's a lie. It's something we've been taught or told that we should be seeking and you're never going to find an answer because there is no balance. When you're full on passionate about what it is that you are creating, it's like an obsession. It, in fact, it is. It's a healthy obsession. And as you get up every day and you jump out of bed and you're like, wow, I get to go and build and create and grow and generate and allow and receive, then it lights up your entire neurology and the whole universe has to conspire to fulfill that, you see, because you're passionate, the endorphins are flying, the positive energy, the, the intention is powerful, the expectation to win is in place. And that then serves as a guide to how you run the rest of your day and how you approach everything from problem solving to, to generating new business to, to growth. Because as you're scaling a business, the problems that are generated from the scaling process become more complex. And this is the whole point. It's not to um, try to get past problems. It's to look at the problems as being a jumping off point, as being a leverage point, as being a sign of growth. So embrace those problems, embrace those challenges, be willing to accept you don't know what you don't know. And as you start taking steps forward toward bigger, brighter, more expansive goals, then you actually create more complex problems. And it's part of the thing that's really evolving you as a human being and growing you. So this is the blessing. So in small business growth, it's not about seeking to get past that problem stage. There's going to be problems at every level of growth, expansion and scale. So having the right mindset to approach that is really the key. Now on a pragmatic level, there are things that you really have to fully embrace and understand in order to get to the next level. And for this video, I'm just going to cover off one, and that is knowledge of who your customers are. 
Who are your customers? Run an avatar on every customer segment that you have. Find out everything you can about them. Where do they hang out? What kind of clothing do they like to wear? What labels are important to them? What do they do in their personal time? Do they have uh, particular interests? Are they involved in nonprofits? Are they philanthropists? Where do they go for social time? And where do they go for their business interaction? How do they connect into the world? Get to know everything about them. What's their annual revenue? What do they spend money on, on giving? Do they support an association? Are they involved with youth? Find out everything you can about your customer segments. Map it out. <clears throat> Pardon me. Get it up on the wall so you and your team can dig into it and create some clarity. And more segmentation than less is always the key because the more information you can dig into about your customer segments, the more clear you'll become on how to reach them, how to onboard them, and then how to work with them so that they become your greatest champion. Now, the next thing I want to share with you on a pragmatic level is this. This is a really important key and it's a, a massive confusion and I hear it all the time and I'm always correcting business leaders on this concept. Sales, marketing and advertising are not the same. They're not the same department. They're not the same thinking. They're not the same strategy and they're not the same behavior. So if you have your marketing and your sales and your advertising all lumped into one person or one department, that's probably costing you all sorts of profitability. Sales is a completely different neuroscience than marketing. Marketing is pushing a product out there. Advertising is drawing attention to it. So these are three different ways of perceiving your company's positioning in the marketplace. And there's never going to be one person that gets all of that and can manage all of that for you. So if you're a small business and you're trying to cut corners and have one person, you know, wear multiple hats, you're probably not going to get the bandwidth that you really deserve. So you really have to split that up. And that brings me to my closing point. This is really all about two things. It's about how you've mapped your business model and it's how you've mapped your annual strategic plan and connected that into your business model. So you really get those things clear and then you'll see the success come in your business. And of course, in the process of all of that, really fall in love with your business. Whether you're working for a large corporation and you think that you're invisible, or whether you're a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, running a small business, or on a leadership team of a mid-sized company, it really truly is all about the heart. It really truly is. So thank you so much for joining me. My name is Deborah Peters. I'm a business coach and a mindset expert, professional speaker, and I have a book coming out this year. I really look forward to connecting with you. Thanks for subscribing. Hit the bell next to the subscribe button if you like this content. And when I upload content a couple times a week, you'll get the notification and then you can jump on over here and have a watch. Have a blessed day and I will see you in the next couple days.